And I feel like a lot of institutions are operating not so much like non for profit, but for profit model. Do you have any thoughts as being the president of a large R1 research university for the past decade? That's a good question about whether or not they really operate as nonprofits. And, and particularly if you look at the things that increase cost. So it's not necessarily the cost of faculty, it's not necessarily the cost of staff, it's a lot of peripheral cost. One of those is college athletics. And a lot of those are peripheral costs around uh, core infrastructure. So uh, housing, dining cost, athletic cost, things that may arguably not be essential to higher education. So it really is a challenge to think about what is at the heart of higher education, really what's important and what's uh, critical to what we do. And ultimately, how do we price it and how do we think about that is an issue. You know, the problem for higher ed has just been incremental increases in tuition. I'm sure that, you know, your experience was probably very similar to my experience and everyone else that every year uh, you just see an annual bump in your tuition. And uh, and where do, the, where do those dollars go? And I think that higher ed really has to answer those questions for students, uh, both at the undergraduate level and the graduate level. Yeah, I want to highlight what you said that, of course, it's a large umbrella, which encompasses a lot of different factors is why the tuition is increasing every year. We talked about we do need to identify and discern some of the most important pieces. And David, I know you're a first generation graduate yourself. I can kind of assume that that's why student success is very passionate to you because you were also the beneficiary of scholarship through the army. What do you think is the most important quality of higher education, whether that's how it is now or from your personal experience through the lens of a first generation graduate? Yeah, you know, I think the, the most critical element in terms of impact of higher education is access of students to have relationships with faculty. The ability to relate to faculty, not just in a classroom, but outside of a classroom and making sure that faculty are not stretched so thin that they don't have time for that. I think one of the most critical, you know, one of the most critical challenges that faculty face are, are just a broad array of demands that make it difficult for them to interact in meaningful ways with students and particularly outside of the classroom. Now, some of the most impactful, look at my personal experience, some of the most impactful times that I had as an undergraduate war, times that I spent with faculty outside of the classroom. Part of the reason I became a psychologist is I developed a relationship with a one of my professors, a, a fellow by the name of John Darley, uh, who actually was one of the most prominent social psychologists in the world at the time. And it really had significant influence on my decision on what to do. But it was a function of being able to spend time with him, talk with him, and really get to know and understand what psychology was about. That would not have happened just in a classroom. And I worry that we're losing a lot of of that capacity. I worry that we're losing a lot of the elements of higher ed that are probably more impactful, more meaningful for students. Would you say that the higher ed carries the same weight as it did when you were coming up the rank or when you're going through the education process? Yeah, probably. It's probably changed a little bit with the escalation of, of cost. I mean, I you know, certainly higher ed has great impact on ultimately issues about financial status and financial well-being. I mean, that data is pretty overwhelming. Now, what's interesting, though, um, I would argue that because of the affordability issue, because of the costing issue, uh, that where you get your degree matters less today than it did 30 years ago. That opportunity is more available and accessible uh, as it should be. And and the issue of, of where you get an undergraduate degree is probably less of a critical issue than where you go to professional school or get a graduate degree, uh, which is a good thing. And, you know, the, the idea of paying exorbitant amounts of money. So if you look at NYU, one of the most expensive universities to attend in the world, and part of that is not just tuition costs, but living and dining costs in New York, aggregate cost on an annual basis, including tuition at NYU approaches $90,000 a year. Yeah, that's a significant amount of money. You know, I think those kinds of issues really beg the question of what is the value of a degree and what is the value of a degree from a specific institution relative to cost and debt. And student debt is a huge issue uh, for many, many reasons. And it's going to ripple through, ultimately will ripple through the national economy for the next couple of decades. Hey, yes, you, to all my fellow introspective thinkers, thank you you for being curious. If you enjoyed watching this short clip, I recommend clicking here for the full length video. Here's to discovering more authentic life stories, mental health insights, 
and toolkits. Let's get this started. Peace.